Well, I had a really polished speech ready for you tonight. Five different people worked on it. I spoke to myself, uh, walked around the house talking to myself for days, hoping that somehow my effort would show you just how exciting this opportunity is for us. But I told my husband I did it for him last night and he gave me the words I didn't want to hear. It's boring and it's lacking the passion. <laughs> so I've ditched the speech and you're going to hear our story from the heart. So in 2010, um, my husband and I moved to Haiti. Most of you will remember the earthquake that flattened most of the country and killed hundreds of thousands of people. We moved there to help with the rebuilding. But what we saw was school after school with nothing, no resources at all. Most of the schools were operating out of tents at the time with teachers that were doing their best, but most of them hadn't finished high school themselves. They had no curriculum to teach from and not a single book to read. So you can imagine the outcomes that education has when that's all you've got at your fingertips. Now this really impacted me. I love to read, but I'm from construction. What could I possibly do to change this situation? And I naively thought that the situation they found themselves in was because of the earthquake. But I quickly realised it had nothing to do with the earthquake. It was like this before. This was their normal. This was their reality. And it was six months later, I was sitting with my husband in a hotel room, we were waiting for our visas to be approved to return to Haiti, and the idea for Library for All struck me like a lightning bolt. I had this vision of a cloud-based digital library filled with engaging, exciting books that children would love to read, and people were reading them on their mobile phone. Now, if you think back to 2010, that would seem like a somewhat crazy idea. Most of you probably hadn't even picked up a digital book at that stage. And so when I started pitching that idea to funders, they thought I was a little bit crazy. And most of them said to me, there's no way this is going to happen. It was lovely to meet you. Please leave. So we turned to Kickstarter. We raised $110,000 on Kickstarter and we built a digital library for Haiti. I remember that very first day we launched that digital library, we were holding Tablets from India, I don't know if you remember the $100 tablet from India when it was launched back then? We had them as a test. The kids sat in a circle and they read for the very first time from books with kids that looked like them in a language that they could actually understand. I remember the moment when they opened the first books, there was cries all around the room, Gade, Gade, it means look, look. They couldn't believe that the kids actually looked like them. Because if they had seen books before, they were donated books from America that were in English and full of white kids. And unfortunately, that's what the publishing industry globally looks like. And when I started on this journey, I used to think that this was, I started off thinking that this was just a Haiti problem. But after months and months of research, I realised that this actually was a global problem. There are 250 million children globally that will not learn to read. And this is despite attending school. Without access to books that are relevant to them in a language that they can understand, they face a lifetime of illiteracy. So what could we do about this? We built a digital library from those very early beginnings of a, I, I laugh at it, thinking it was a fake digital library back then, trying to show the kids what we could do. But we built an actual digital library that's accessible on tablets and mobile phones. We, we launched in six small countries after Haiti, and I'm excited to let you know that in 2016 we moved back to Australia, and in partnership with Child Fund and World Vision and Canberra University, we launched a digital library for Papua New Guinea. I'm excited because I love to work close to home. It meant we could move back with our family, but most of all we could see the impact. Um, our supporters could come and see the impact because it was so close. Just a few months ago, I was sitting um, in PNG with a little girl uh, who I remember from a year ago when we first launched the library in her school. She couldn't read at all, and here we were, less than a year later, she was reading fluently, and her teachers put it down entirely to the digital library. After she finished reading for me, I asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up. She looked up to me and she smiled, and she said, I want to be a helicopter pilot. And I got really excited and I said to her, do you know that we have a book in our library about a female helicopter pilot? And she, she said to me, yeah, that's where I got the idea. <laughs> After I composed myself, <laughs> I sat down and I called my team and I told them, like, this 
is really working. We know it's working. We track 26 different data points on our digital library. We get to see the impact that we're having every day. But to hear it face to face with the kids that we serve is something that stays with us and drives us, drives us every day. Now you know how I said that I was really excited about working in Australia, close to Australia. We're about to start working in Australia. For years we've been asked to work with Indigenous languages, bring our scalable technology um, to the children of Australia. So I'm excited to let you know that we're about to start working with two Aboriginal languages. And with your support tonight, we, with $15,000 with your support tonight, we could uh, publish 20 Indigenous language stories onto our digital library. This will help us kickstart our Indigenous languages. If we were to raise $25,000 tonight, we would be able to run writers' workshops in community, working with local authors and illustrators to give them the tools they need to tell their own stories. Now, I know it's ambitious, but if we were to raise $50,000 tonight, we could create a standalone Aboriginal languages digital library so everybody can access a language that they understand and need to learn in. So I know that this problem that we're trying to address is huge. We're under no illusion. But with your support, we'll be able to impact generation, this generation and generations to come. <laughs>